morning family it's this day of the Lord it's Sunday morning it's a beautiful day to worship the Lord and we are so glad that you are joining us from wherever you're joining us this morning we welcome you if you're joining us for the first time we welcome you to praise church South Africa thank you for tuning in thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning to worship the Lord to give him praise and wherever you're joining us from today I'd like you to please leave us a comment if you would do that, then we know that you are there. And we can also pray for you and call your name before the Lord. So however you feel right now, it's a new day. And it's a new day to praise the Lord. So won't you right now put in a comment and say, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Go ahead, type in whatever you want, but I'm speaking it over you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I want to read a portion of scripture as we begin to pray this morning. John chapter 4 and verse 19 says this. It speaks about the woman at the well. When Jesus met this woman, the Bible says that she said, uh, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. John 4 verse 19. And she said, Our fathers worship on this mountain. But you all say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus said to her in verse 21, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. Hallelujah. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Yet the hour is coming and now is here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship Him. Worship is not in the mountain or in Jerusalem. Worship is within you. Worship is an outward expression of an inward impression. We are the only children of God that can worship God from within us. And I pray to you today that you will worship God in your spirit and in truth hallelujah not in the flesh and in lies but in spirit and in truth so i invite you stand if you're in your living room or wherever you are and let's worship the lord today let's celebrate the lord on this beautiful lord's day forget about what happened yesterday forget about what happened this week god brought you he woke you up this morning to worship him he gave you breath to lift up your voice to him and magnify his name. So come on, go ahead right now. Lift up your hands with me. Let's worship the Lord. Father, we magnify you. 
we glorify you we exalt your name above the heavens above the earth we exalt the name of Jesus let the name of Jesus be lifted up on this beautiful Lord's day father come and take your place in our homes Lord we build an altar of prayer we build an altar of worship and we worship you this morning in spirit and in truth we will not hold back what belongs to you so i pray today let every voice be lifted let every heart be opened to worship the king of kings and the lord of lords we worship and magnify you today thank you lord bless every person that is tuning today bless our time together now in jesus name and all god's people said amen and amen come on go ahead let's praise the lord as the worship team our praise church worship team will lead you in praise and worship god bless you
over the word of the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you for this beautiful Lord's Day. Thank you for the worship that has gone up to you this morning. Thank you for everyone that is joining us through live streaming and wherever they're joining us in the world today. You have a word for them. And right now, I release the word of God. 
I pray that you will anoint my lips to preach your word accurately. As you have put this word in my spirit, Lord, I pray your word will be good seed and it will fall on good ground. I bless your people and I pray that you will bless your word now unto our hearts and glorify your name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, turn with me to John chapter 12 and verse number 24. John chapter 12, verse number 24. And let's read together. The Bible says, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. I want to speak to you on a subject this morning, the power of a grain of wheat. Can you say that with me? The power of a grain of wheat. The Bible says in John chapter 12, verses 24, Most assuredly, I say to you, Jesus is speaking, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. I'm speaking to you this morning on the power of a grain of wheat. Last week, I shared with you on the spirit of a sower. From Mark chapter 4, Jesus tells the parable of how the sower sows the word. The word is the seed. The word is the seed. The soil is our hearts. And it can either be, and as I shared with you last week from Mark chapter 4, it can either be wayside ground, it could be stony ground, or it could be thorny ground, or it could be good soil. And I pray today that your heart is good soil. And I put an emphasis on your heart because when your heart is good soil, it will produce 30 to 60 to 100 fold. The seed of God's word will produce in your life. And here in this text, the Bible speaks about the power of a grain of wheat that falls to the ground and dies. Listen to me, beloved. There is power in a seed. Can I say that again? There is power in a seed. In the Garden of Eden, the serpent tempted Eve to eat the apple. But it was not Eve that the serpent was after or the enemy was after. The serpent was after Adam because Adam had seed. Oh, hallelujah. All of us have seed. Can you say amen? And Adam had seed and in us was we were in the seed of Adam. Mankind was in the seed of Adam. And so the serpent wanted to destroy the seed. Hallelujah. Let me say this to you. Everything begins with a seed. You began with a seed. Oh, come on, somebody. The enemy wanted to destroy, wanted to destroy Adam so he could destroy the seed. Because your seed represents your future. Oh, hallelujah. Your seed represents your future future. Can somebody say amen? A seed represents a generation. The seed, your seed represents your future. One seed can grow into a tree and produce a harvest of trees with fruit. Oh, hallelujah. You and I were created from a seed. When you were born again, the Bible says that you were born into incorruptible seed. You were born into Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? We were born into him. Now we now live and move and have our being in the Lord. Can somebody say amen? This means everything I need is within me. Can I hear you say that? Say everything I need, everything I need is within me. Hallelujah. It's not on the outside. You see, Adam lived with a relationship with God. He lived from the inside out. Many times people and religion will, will want you to live from the outside in. So everything on the outside influences you, influences your behavior. But I'm saying to you, God is within you. Oh, hallelujah. 
God is within you and we worship him from within us. We are the only people that can worship a God not on the outside but a God from within because he comes to dwell on the inside of you. Now you are in him and he is in you. Can I say a big, big, big amen this morning? Hallelujah. Everything on the outside comes from within you. The Bible says in Luke 17, 21, that the kingdom of God is within you. Oh, hallelujah. you didn't hear me. The kingdom of God is within you. When Jesus told the disciples, listen to the story, to feed the 5,000, they were in the middle of nowhere. The Bible says they were in a desert. They were in a wilderness place. They were far from everything and, and everybody. And the disciples said they couldn't do it. They said it will take so much of money for us to go and get food. And where are we going to get food from? But Jesus said, you can do it. And he said to them, check what you have. And they said, Lord, we only have five loaves and two fishes. You know the story. Five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus said, that's enough because the power is within you. Everything you need is within you. Hallelujah. That's why the seed has to be sown within you. The seed of God's word has to germinate within you so it can produce a fruit and a harvest. Can somebody say amen? The Bible says that Jesus took the five loaves and the two fishes. He blessed it. He gave it to them. And as they distributed it, it multiplied in their hands. Wow. It multiplied in their hands. Provision came from within because God is within us. The kingdom is within us and the king is within you. Come on, say amen. The kingdom is within, within us and the king is within us. So everything you need is within you. You don't look outside for provision. You don't look to man for provision. You don't look to the hills or, or wherever. You look to God within you. That's why when you speak the word, you get a word and you sow that word, its seed into the soil of your heart. And as you fertilize it, as you speak it, it will produce fruit. Money will come. Provision will come. Miracles will happen all around you. But it's not the outside in. It's the inside out. Hallelujah. It's what on the, what's on the inside that's producing mighty miracles on the outside. Can I hear a big amen this morning? Hallelujah. Now a seed needs soil. The soil is within you. Everyone say, the soil is within me. The seed is the word of God. So you have to plant the word of God in you to meet whatever you need. Whatever you need from God this morning, beloved, is within you. But you have to plant the seed of God's word in you. That's why it's so imp important to get into the word because that's where faith comes. That's how faith is ignited. Faith, I said to you on Wednesday, is like the size of a mustard seed. Hallelujah. All it takes is a seed. Hallelujah. It takes a seed of faith and the seed of God's word to ignite something on the inside of you. The seed of God's word must be planted. Listen to me. God gave us a vision to plant a church. God gave us a vision to build a church. We did not have the money. Beloved, listen to me. We didn't have wealth or resources. I don't have a business. I don't have any wealthy friends. I don't have uh, even a wealthy family. But God gave us the word, hallelujah, to plant a church and to build a church. What we did was we took the word, hallelujah, and we said it. We declared the vision. So many times I stood in our shop front here in Y Bank and I proclaimed the vision that we are purchasing this land on fields here. That time we didn't even have the money to purchase the land. I put it up on the wall. I put up a, a, a barrel meter to say this is how much we need for the land. And I declared the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord I took was Joshua 1 verses 3. It says, everywhere your foot shall tread upon, you shall possess. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Everywhere your foot will tread upon. And I took that word. I took some of our brethren. I went to the property. Even my wife and I went with our, with, with our, our son Joshua. And we walked the bush of that land in Jerome Drive. And we declared everywhere that our foot will tread upon, we shall possess. What happened? The word was seed. And the word was sown into the soil of our 
hearts. Now when you see the manifestation, it's not because it just happened, but because the seed was sown into the soil of your heart. Whatever you want from God is within you. You have to sow the seed of God's word in you. Can I hear a big amen? Come on, can I hear a big amen? That's how you do it. And it will begin to germinate. It will begin to grow. Hallelujah. You start off by sowing the word. And then you sow a seed. Can you say amen? The seed has a process. Can somebody say amen? And it will do its job. And you have to do your job. The seed will do its part. You have to do your part. Can I, can I say this? Never abort the process of seed. See, every time, you see, we see the building now of our church. And, and sorry, I keep referring to it, but that's what God is doing right now in our church and in our lives. And I see this miracle happening before us, the manifestation of vision. But it took years. Our church is 13 years old. The property is over six years old. When we purchased it, nothing was happening. It was as if the seed of God's word died. It was as if I questioned God many times. God, did you really tell me to do this? Did you really want us to buy this property? I even questioned, should we keep the property or should we sell the property? What should we do? And, 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 and things were closed and, and we didn't see anything happening. But the seed was in the ground. The seed. Oh, hallelujah. The seed was in the ground. It was sown into fertile soil. Hallelujah. And it will not return void. And beloved, I want you to know, don't give up on the seed. Don't give up on the seed. It may take a while, but leave that process to God. Don't abort the process. Everyone say, don't abort the process of seed, of time, and of harvest. There's a process called seed sowing time is the waiting and harvest is when you reap come on say amen it's all a part of life if we didn't have to go through those six years purchasing the land breaking the ground i mean on our seventh anniversary we put up a tent i broke the ground i was telling somebody uh, the other day i put up a stone on the property like uh, like jacob did the stone that he laid his head where there was a gateway to heaven and he poured oil on it. I did the same. I poured oil on it and I declared this is the house of God, the dwelling place of God, the gateway to heaven. I declared that so many years ago and nothing happened. Why? The seed was producing. The seed was being germinated. Come on, say amen. You have to believe God. Can somebody say amen? You have to believe God. So let me go back to my text. John 12, 24 says, I tell you the truth, unless a can kennel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. When a seed goes into the ground, in order for it to produce life, it has to die. The seed, if you look at the seed, never stays the same in the ground. It has to die. That wrapping over it has to die for life to come out from within. Wow. For life to come out from within. In death, there's life. God takes dead things. He took dead bones and made an army. Hallelujah. He will take dead things. Your seed must come to life. But first, it must die. Wow. First, it must die. You know how many times? I thought the vision was dead. I thought it's not going to happen. We're not going to be able to build this church. We're not going to be able to establish praise church because we moved from place to place. Our last place was the school, as many of you know. And we moved and I thought this vision was dead. And some of you thinking your vision is dead. Your dream is dead. It's not going to happen. COVID-19 came, messed up everything. It's not going to happen. But as long as the seed is planted in the soil of your heart, it has to come alive. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody rejoice with me this morning. It has to come alive. Say amen. It has to come alive. The word will live. The promise will come to pass. Tell somebody next to you, the word will live. The promise will come to pass. When you speak the word, 
you sow the seed and as long as the seed is in your heart which is fertile ground it may look like it's dead but it's alive life is going to come from within because that's the supernatural power of god soon enough it's going to manifest itself and it's going to break through the ground hallelujah i'm talking to you this morning it's going to break through the ground jesus was talking about himself unless a kennel of wheat falls to the ground and dies he was talking about himself he said he had to die so that we could live so that they could be life he was saying that he had to die there had to be death for there to be life his death on the cross produced salvation to mankind jesus was the seed of god oh wow hallelujah jesus was the seed of god he had to be put into the ground he had to die so that life could come up again is there somebody listening to me he had to be put into the ground and die right day i'm saying to you today unless a kennel of wheat falls to the ground and dies it remains a seed oh hallelujah but when it dies it produces life jesus was that seed listen to me church right there in the garden of eden when man sinned god cursed the serpent and he said this genesis 3:15 i will put enmity between you the serpent and the woman and god said this and between your seed and her seed everything begins with a seed between your seed and her seed why because the seed speaks of your future and he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel he was saying her seed was the woman's seed which was jesus was to bruise the serpent seed which was the devil hallelujah jesus right there it was declaring it in the book of genesis that the seed the incorruptible seed the kennel of wheat that has to fall to the ground will bruise the head of the devil that's the power of a seed hallelujah the seed and your seed the bible says shall bruise the head of the devil this was fulfilled when the grain of wheat fell to the ground the power of a grain of wheat the power of a seed this is what i want you to see this morning it took place on calvary when jesus died he bruised the head of the devil he destroyed the curse of sin once and for all now mankind has eternal life because the kennel of wheat fell to the ground and died now you and i have eternal life that's good enough reason to praise the lord this morning that's good enough reason to pray clap your hands and say thank you jesus unless a kennel of wheat falls to the ground sometimes we don't understand what's happening in our lives but the power of the grain of wheat was in the crushing point was in the point of death sometimes we don't understand why we going through what we going through we almost feel like everything has been crushed and even been put to death but there's life when death happens life will spring forth hallelujah life will spring forth and i declare that over you this morning praise church family of god i declare to you it may seem like nothing is happening but unless a kennel of wheat falls to the ground and dies it remains a single seed but if it dies it produces many seeds believe in the power of a seed keep sowing the word into the soil of your heart may your seed that will be crushed and be put to death produce a harvest that's pleasing to god i declare that over you this morning the power of a kennel of wheat right now whatever your dreams are whatever is your desires what god put in your heart the seed of the word that you have spoken the word and it's been sown in your heart right now you think it's not going to happen you feel it's dead but it's in the ground right now let us pray together father i declare over every person that is listening to me over every vision that may seem dead over every dream that may seem not impossible to happen oh you said if we have uh, faith the size of a mustard seed why did you say that lord faith the size of a mustard seed a very small seed because you want us to know 
all things are possible to us if we just believe in the power of a seed and the seed is your word so I speak your word over my life I speak your word over uh, my, my family's life right now Lord that is listening to me and I declare that they will not give up but they will keep sowing the seed Keep sowing the word and you will produce life out of dead things, out of impossible situations. You will produce life, Lord, like you did it for us. That vision will come to pass. It will manifest itself as we continue to speak the word and believe the word together in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, praise the Lord with me this morning. Come on, rejoice this morning. Declare it in your homes. Come on, declare it in your homes. Some of you right now need to declare that word. Come on, speak the word out of your, your mouth. Don't be quiet. Speak the word. Whatever God said, you're going to possess the land. You're going to step into your promise. You're going to see the fulfillment of your dream and your desires because it's going to produce in your life. This is the time to sow and to reap. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord bless you as we continue to worship. And as we prepare our hearts for the table of the Lord, I want to ask every head of the home to get your communion out. Would you do that right now? Get up some juice and some bread right now and let us get ready to partake together. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. As we come around the table of the Lord this morning, we declare there's power in the broken body and in the blood of the Lamb. So right now, as you gather your family and as you take the bread, the Bible says that Jesus took bread on the night that he was betrayed. And when he broke it, he said, this is my body that was broken for you. As often as you eat it, you do now in remembrance of me. So let us take the bread together. Come on, let's worship. Oh, we worship you, Father. Oh, we bless you, mighty God. Father, we take your bread. Let us eat now in the members of Him. Hallelujah. In like manner, Jesus took the cup, the cup of His new covenant, His blood that was shed for you. As often as you drink now, you do this in remembrance of Him, His power, wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. Let us drink together. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you as we give to the Lord this morning. You can never leave a ground barren. You have to sow a seed. You have to sow a seed. And I, wherever I go, whatever I do, I always look for a place to sow a seed. And I believe this is good ground to sow into. Can you say amen? This vision, this house is good ground. I'm going to share a word with you. Genesis 12 verses 26 speaks about Isaac. Isaac was the promised child. And the Bible says in verse 26, And there was famine in the land. There was famine. Famine means there was nothing growing. There was nothing happening. It was dry. It was not even a time to sow or to plant. In famine, the Bible says there was famine in the land besides the former famine which was been in the days of Abraham. And verse 12 says, And Isaac sowed in that land. Listen to me. Isaac sowed in a land of famine and received in the same year a hundredfold. And Jehovah blessed him. And the man became great. Listen to this. And he became continually greater until he was very great. And all and he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants and the Philistines envied him all because he sowed in the land of famine there is power in a seed I want you to know it's God that brings the increase to your seed a seed is a seed sometimes you think it's hard times, it's famine. I don't have enough. I don't have enough for food. I don't have enough to pay my bills. I want you to know if it doesn't meet your need, it's your seed. Hallelujah. And your seed will never leave, will leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. Are you listening to me? A seed will leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. When you sow, beloved, that seed is a part of you. You have earned whatever you have done. Uh, in labor or in work it's a part of you it's a part of your toil and your labor and as you sow as even as you sow into the house of God 
it connects you to the vision. It connects you to the house. It may leave your hand, but it never leaves your life because the seed will produce a harvest back to you. Come on, say amen. And when you sow in fertile ground, you can be assured that you're going to reap a good harvest. 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. I declare 100 fold as Isaac in the same year reaped 100 fold. I declare over you that you'll become continually greater. I declare that the enemy, the, your enemies and people that, that spoke about you will envy you because you know the power of a seed. So don't leave the ground barren this morning. Sow a seed. The details are on the screen. Sow a seed. I believe I want you to help us. We are on the verge of something great. As a church, we are on the verge of something great. And I'm asking you to partner with us. Connect with this vision. Imagine sowing a seed, whatever it is, beloved, small or big. When you sow a seed into that building, that building will testify to the goodness of God for generations to come, for our children and our children's children, and to the glory of God. So let me pray for you as you give. Father, this morning I thank you for every sower. I thank you, Lord, that you will bless every sower. You said, Lord, if the sower sows, that they will reap 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. I pray today for every person that will give into this vision and into this house. Every member of Praise Church, every tither. Lord, we believe your word and we stand upon your word that you are no man's debtor. Whatsoever a man sows, so shall he reap. And I declare like Isaac, Father, sowed in a time of famine, he reaped a hundredfold. I declare that over my brother, over my sister, over that young man, and over that young woman, I declare that over you now, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you, and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you now, give you peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken now and even until jesus comes and all god's people said amen and amen hallelujah bless the name of the lord well i'm getting ready to welcome you back to church on the 4th of october sunday the 4th of october the first sunday of october the 10th month of the tw of 2020 we're going to be opening the church doors and i believe that we'll be able to accommodate all of you our building can hold comfortably 500 people. With our gallery, we can take over 700 people. Wow, praise the Lord. So we can hold, the, 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 the government says 50%, which is roughly 250 people. So we have room for you, amen? So I believe today, it's time to come back to church. It's time to worship together. Yes, we will live stream for all our international viewers. We will live stream from the church building. And I'm asking you to join us on the fourth of uh, October, you send us your names, we'll register you, we'll do all the protocols, check your temperature and all of that, we'll distance you, but what a beautiful time it'll be to be in the house of the Lord. I'm asking you to pray that the Lord will direct you to sow a seed into the, the completion of the world. There's so much to do, hundreds of thousands. Of, we're busy now uh, doing the parking area and I need to put in carpets and all of these things are hundreds of thousands. The carpets, the ceilings, and all of that just to make it a place where we can worship. And I'm asking you, if the Lord speaks to you, do what the Lord says. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I love you. Thank you for joining us. Would you send me a comment? Then I know that you're there. And I'm praying for you. Love you. Here for you. And would you also share this broadcast so others will be blessed by the word of the Lord, the power of a grain of wheat. Love you. Have a beautiful Lord's Day. We'll see you on Wednesday. God bless you. Thank you for joining us at Praise Church South Africa, Church Online. It was a joy to have you. If you are blessed, please feel free to like our broadcast, post a comment, and please do share this broadcast. You can connect with us on Facebook and YouTube at Praise Church SA or visit our website at www praisechurch.co.za Alternatively, drop us an email at info at praisechurch.co.za To give to God, our banking details will appear on the screen and you can also snap scan for your convenience.
Thank you again for being a part of our church service here at Praise Church South Africa, where our mission is reaching the world through the love and grace of Jesus Christ, cultivating true worshippers and strengthening families for life. God bless you, family. See you next Sunday at 9.30 a.m.